Hello and welcome to the next edition of the HP Discover podcast series. I'm Dana Gardner, Principal Analyst at Interarbor Solutions, your host and moderator for this ongoing sponsored discussion on IT innovation and how it's making an impact on people's lives. Once again, we're focusing on how companies are adapting to the new style of IT to improve IT performance and deliver better user experiences as well as better business results. Our next innovation case study interview highlights how GameStop, based in Grapevine, Texas, is using big data to improve how it conducts its business and serves its customers. To learn more about how they deploy big data and use analytics, we're joined by John Crossan. He's the vertical lead at GameStop in Grapevine, Texas. Welcome, John. Yeah, yeah, thank you for having me. My pleasure. So tell us a little bit about GameStop. Most people are probably familiar with the retail outlets that they see, uh, where you can buy and rent and trade games and learn more about games. Um, why is big data important to your organization? Um, we really want to get a better idea of who our customers are, um, how we can better serve our customers, um, what types of needs they may have. So with prior reporting we had, we would get good overall views of here's how the company is doing, here's how a particular game series is selling, but we weren't able to tie that to um, activities of individual customers and possible future activity of future customers using more of a traditional um, SQL-based MBI platform um, that would just deliver flat reports. So that, that's really our goal going forward was to get a more 360 view of, of our customer and um, we realized pretty quickly that using our existing tool sets and methodologies that, that wasn't going to be possible um, and that, that's where Vertica ended up coming into play to um, help drive us in that direction. Mm -hmm. And uh, just so we have a sense of the scale here, how many retail outlets does GameStop support? And, and are you just in the States, or where, where are you located? Um, it, international, there's approximately 4,200 stores in the U.S., um, another 2,200 international. <clears throat> and uh, in terms of the type of data that you're acquiring, is this all internal data, or do you go to external data sources, and how do you bring that together? Um, primarily internal data. Um, we get data from our website, um, we have a uh, Power Up Rewards program that um, customers can choose to join and data from individual cash registers and, and all of those stores. And now gaming, uh, I know from experience and in my own family, is a very fast moving industry. Uh, we've gone from different platforms to different game types, different technologies for interacting with the games, a very dynamic a uh, changeable landscape for the users as well as, of course, the providers of games. You're sort of in the middle. You're, you're right between the users and the vendors. You must be very important to, uh, to the whole ecosystem. Most definitely. I mean, there aren't really many game players left anymore, and I mean, GameStop's certainly the preeminent one. So that's where a lot of customers come, not just to purchase a game, but get information from store associates. Um, we have a Game Informer magazine that uh, people like to read, certainly content on the website as well. And um, now that you know where to get the data and you have the data, um, how big is it? How difficult is it to manage? Are you looking for real time or batch? How, how do you then move forward from that data to some business outcome? It's primarily batch at, at, at this point. Um, the re registers close at night. We get data from the registers and load those into Vertica. Um, when we started, uh, approximately two years ago, we did not have a single byte in Vertica. Now we're pretty close to 24 terabytes of data, um, primarily customer data and in individual customers as well as things like web logs, uh, mobile application data. So I should think when you analyze that about which games are being bought, which ones are being traded, which ones are uh, price sensitive and, and, and move at a certain price or not, you're really at the vanguard of knowing the trends in the gaming industry even perhaps before anyone else. How, how has that worked for you and, and what are you finding? Uh, a lot of it's just based on determining who is likely to buy which series of games. So we won't market somebody who's you know, buying you know, children's games like here's the next you know, Call of Duty 3 or, or something like that or we're not going to send people who buy Call of Duty 3, here's My Little Pony 6 <laughs> or something for example. Um, it, kind of the interesting thing, at least with, with games and video game systems, is when they're selling, when we sell them new, there there is no price movement. Um, everybody, every game is the same price, any store. So we have to rely on other things like customer service and getting information to the customer to drive 
drive game sales or the price of a game of GameStop's the same as anywhere else for, for new games. So used games are, are a bit of a different story. Now, uh, back to Vertica, uh, given that you've been using this for a few years and you have such a, a substantial data uh, lake there, uh, what is it about Vertica that works for you and what are you learning here at the conference that intrigues you about the future? Well, the, the, the initial push with Vertica was just to get reports fast. Uh, we, we had processes that would literally take a day to run to accumulate data, and now in Vertica we can pull that same data out in five minutes. And I, I think if we spend a little more time, we could probably get it <laughs> faster than that. <laughs> but um, So the, the, the first big push was just speed. And then kind of the second wave after that was bringing in data sources that were unattainable before, like web click data, a tremendous amount of data, loading that into SQL, and then much less being able to try to query it out of SQL. It just wasn't doable, and the, the, I don't even think an attempt was made to do that. So it was first faster data, then acquiring new data, and then finding different ways to tie different data elements together that perhaps we hadn't done before. Mm -hmm. Now, um, <clears throat> how about visualization of these reports? How, how do you serve up those reports, and do you make your inference and analytics outputs available to all your employees, or how, how, we, how do you distribute it? And, and is, is there sort of an innovation curve that you're following in terms of what they do with that data? Um, as, as far as a, a platform, we use t Tableau as our visualiz visualization tool. Um, we use also a bit of kind of an ad hoc environment where users can write direct SQL queries to pull pull data out. Uh, Tableau is uh, the primary tool we use. Mm. All right. Well, on that data input um, area, what uh, what integration technologies are you interested in? What would you like to see Vertica do differently? Are you are you happy with the way uh, SQL and Vertica and Hadoop and other uh, technologies are coming together or not. Um, where do you like? Where would you like to see that go? Well, a, a lot of our source systems are um, either SQL Server based or um, just flat files. Um, so flat files, just the, we use the copy command to bring data in, and that's very fast. Um, with Vertica 7, they released the Microsoft SQL connector, um, so we were able to use our existing SSIS data flows and change the output from another SQL table to directly into, into SQL, I'm sorry, directly into Vertica, and it uses the um, you know, copy command under the covers using the, the stream, and that's been, been a major improvement. Before that, we had to essentially stage the data, stage the data somewhere else, and then use the copy command to bring it in, or try to use ODBC to bring it in, which wasn't very efficient. Mm -hmm. uh, any interest in Hadoop? Is that something on your horizon? We are l looking at that. Great. Uh, how about words uh, of wisdom from your 2020 hindsight? You know, uh, if others are thinking about also moving from um, a standard uh, relational database environment uh, more towards uh, uh, big data stores for analytics and speed and velocity of uh, their uh, uh, reports, <clears throat> uh, any advice you might offer organizations as they're making that transition now that you've done it? Um, I, I think just better understand how um, how a column store database works and how that's different from a traditional row-based database. It, it's a different mindset. Um, everything from how you're going to lay out some, some data modeling um, to, I mean, for for example, in the row database, you tend to freak out if you had a 700 column table in the column store. It's not doesn't really matter. <laughs> you can have doesn't really matter. So just to, to get in the right mindset of here's how a column store database works versus a row-based database and not try to duplicate your row-based system in your column store system. Well, great. I'm afraid we'll have to leave it there. I'd like to thank our guest, uh, John Crossan, the Vertica lead at GameStop in Grapevine, Texas. Uh, appreciate your input. Okay. Yeah, thank you. And also thank you to our audience for joining us for this special new style of IT discussion. I'm Dana Gardner, Principal Analyst at Interarbor Solutions, your host for this ongoing series of HP-sponsored discussions. Thanks again for listening, and come back next time.